Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for sticking around through that break. If you are just tuning in, we just finished covering a lot of the major NFL news that came out today, including uh, Mike Evans' huge contract to return to the Bucks. Uh, some Russell Wilson news, him officially uh, being designated for release as of March 13th, along with uh, just some other minor stuff that happened over the weekend and earlier today. Uh, in this second segment, we are going to be moving into some NFL rule changes. Uh, every year, the comp- uh, competition committee meets to vote on rules. Each NFL team proposes a new rule, and these are some of the rules that have been rumored to have been uh, voted on in the competition committee. Uh, we'll get into that in just a second. But before we get too far into this topic, remember that if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you are right now, all you need to do is go to GSMC, excuse me, gsmcpodcast.net, leave a tip or donation. It'll pop up on the screen there uh, for a minute. Uh, we'll have a little uh, talk about what you had to say, your uh, opinions will be broadcast across the internet, across every single platform that we are live on, uh, and we appreciate anything you do give. Uh, Remember, that link is gsmcpodcast.net. But like I was saying, we are going to talk about proposed NFL rule changes today. Uh, And a lot of them have to do with special teams. In fact, all three of these rules that I've seen have to do with the kickoff in particular. Um, The first one having to do with onside kicks. And this one is probably the biggest change, I would say, because one of the most magical things about the onside kick, other than how impossible it is and how the only time you really need it is when you're making an incredible, oh my goodness, we have no shot comeback. the onside kick is one of the, one of my favorite plays in sports. Whenever I whenever I see one in passing, I got to stop and see see what happens, you know? You never expect it to work, but it's electric when it does. The onside kick is one of those few plays in all of sports that regardless of the scenario, it's going to be talked about. You could do an onside kick when you're up by 30. Uh and it would still get talked about because what are you doing an onside kick up 30? Uh, it's it's one of my favorite plays in football. One of my one of my favorite things about it. So the rules that would be changed is basically saying you have to be losing in the fourth quarter. So there would be no more of those uh, surprise onside kicks. No more of that. Uh, inc- no more of that. What, that Super Bowl Saints after the halftime onside kick that was so game-changing, made it such a legendary play. You would have to announce that you are doing an onside kick. So it takes the element of surprise out of it. You would have to be trailing, and you have to be in the fourth quarter. So there's pros and cons to this rule. There really are. One of the one of the pros of this rule, obviously, uh it's going to make the onside kick a little a little more a little more uh trying to make it more successful another part of this rule is they would allow uh unbalanced formation so it would allow six people on one side to get on the on the kicking side to go and attempt to recover the onside kick with only four on the receiving side so it would give them a slight advantage there, more bodies obviously, making it a little bit easier. We've seen a drastic drop in onside kick percentage since they may change the uh, the run-up rules a couple of years ago. I think, I mean, a while ago now, I guess. Probably about five years ago at this point. They changed the run-up rules. You are even with the ball, you leave once it's kicked. Um, so ever since then, the onside kick percentage has dwindled. Uh, so this is a way that they can attempt to make it more successful, make it uh, happen more often, but it does come with the caveat that you have to announce it. So no more surprise onside kicks. Not that it happens too often. There were only two surprise onside kicks last season. 
in a small sample size, those surprise onside kicks obviously are more effective. Uh, I was trying to do some research on this because there isn't a on surprise on ki- onside kick stat, and what I found is in the from in 2019 to 2022, it was about 33 percent of the time surprise on ki- side kicks were successful. Again, overall, it's only like three out of nine, so it doesn't happen all that often, but. It is something that that happens every once in a while, so you're getting rid of that. On the other hand, telling the other team you're going to do an onside kick, I get it. I I, I don't really love that. That, That's that's my one hang-up on this rule. The rest of this, this I'm all for. But you have to tell the other team that you're doing it, and restricting when you can do the onside kick is also the big negative for me. Restricting it to only being in the fourth quarter, you know, 99% of the time, this situation that you're restricting it to is the only time that the onside kick is going to happen. But what we we, ta- we mentioned that incredible moment, halftime, in the Super Bowl. The Saints do an onside kick and it changes the game against the Colts. You're not going to get that anymore. You're not going to get those weird timing onside kicks. You're only going to get the traditional ones, and it's not really going to affect the game. 99% of the time, you're not going to notice. But it takes away some of those legendary moments from from happening. Uh, the other rule changes that they were talking about, they were talking about basically adopting the XFL kickoff format, which I am a huge fan of the XFL kickoff format. Basically, you line the two teams up, uh, five yards apart from each other. Uh, you have one return man, ten guys on the 35 and the 40, uh, respectively, for each team. Kicker kicks it. Nobody is allowed to move until the ball crosses the 20-yard line. So if you move beforehand, that's going to be a false start. You have to stay put until the ball crosses the target zone, which is from the, which is basically just the opponent's red zone. So the 20 yard line to the goal line, that is the target zone. So no one's allowed to move until then. It makes collisions less because it's only five yards of run up and it makes it more exciting. You're not still, you're still not getting these massive kickoff returns. Uh, it's still super rare to get a, a kickoff return touchdown and it doesn't change it too much. We've seen this rule in action before. We've seen it be put into play in the XFL, something that I personally am a huge fan of. It's one of my favorite things from from that league that I think the NFL absolutely should adopt. Um, And then the third and final rule that I have been seeing is the change in touchbacks. And this one is the most controversial one to me. I would say about 10 years ago, the NFL moved touchbacks from the 20 to the 25 yard line as an incentive to get more touchbacks. They wanted more touchbacks because the kickoff, frankly, is a very dangerous play. You have these guys full heads of steam running at you as fast as they can with momentum and how big these guys are. It is a very dangerous play. So they wanted to cut down on that. So they incentivized uh, touchbacks. They incentivized uh, receiving teams to take touchbacks. Uh, and that happens. There's been a huge uptick in touchbacks since then. But this rule, this rule is very interesting to me. I think a lot of these, uh, I think a lot of this goes together, all, all three of these, because adopting one of them and not the rest doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. So the way that it would work, you would have a normal touchback, a traditional touchback, one where you kick it through the end zone, kick it through the uprights, whatever. Ball is going to move not to the 30-yard line, to the 35-yard line. That is insane. Starting your drives at the 35 it makes offense so much easier than it already has been. And it has already been, you know, offensive, one of my, offensive has this advantage right now in the NFL. And that changes 
all the time. It's the ebb, ebb and flow of sports. Defenses get better, offenses get offenses get worse. You get into a defensive era, and then the offense responds. You get back into an offensive era, and right now we are in an offensive era of football, and it's a great time to watch. It's fun. It's exciting, um, but giving the offense already a huge, uh, already a a bigger advantage than they already have. You you start to you start to really chip away at making it fair. And the amount of touchbacks that we, we talked about this, the amount of touchbacks that we've seen in the NFL, making it go to the 35-yard line just frankly seems not okay. Uh, that seems like a huge advantage. Now, the one, the one part of this that makes this really interesting to me is that if it's not an end zone touchback, if it lands after that 20-yard line and rolls into the end zone, instead of getting it at the 25, the offense would get it at the 20-yard line, the traditional touchback spot where it was before. And that kind of makes a kickoff a skill game. You're not booting it as far as you can to avoid a return. You have to target practice, really. You have to get more specialized with your kickoffs, and I think that could make it really interesting. Although, penalizing it to the 35 for an end zone touchback seems a little harsh to me. I would have maybe made it the 30 at most. The 35 is is crazy, quite honestly. I'd, um, but yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think here of the of these new NFL rules. Uh, again, that new touchback rule, 35 or 20, uh, the XFL kickoff being adopted, and the new onside kick rules only in the fourth quarter, only when you're losing and you have to tell the other team, but it does allow that unbalanced formation. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on some of these kickoff rules, what you would like to see adopted, uh, if you like the way the rules are, if you'd like to see any changes, let me know in the comments here. Um, but in our next segment, we are going to transition out of the NFL. We are going to move into uh, some basketball talk. LeBron James hit 40,000 career points. Uh, Caitlin Clark became the NCAA all-time leading scorer. Uh, so we are going to talk a little bit about scoring in basketball, some records that are still there to be broken. Uh, you might think there's none to be broken for LeBron James in scoring, but there's still one standing. So stick around uh, on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. We will be right back. <laughs> 